गुड आफ्टरनून टू ऑल दिस इज रमेश फैकल्टी ऑफ बायोलॉजी वेलकम टू द यूट्यूब चैनल ए पाठशाला प्लीज सब्सक्राइब ए पाठशाला यूट्यूब चैनल एंड शेयर ओके टुडे आई एम गोइंग टू एक्सप्लेन द ऑर्गेनिजम्स एंड हैबिटेट लेसन व्हाट लेसन ऑर्गेनिजम्स एंड हैबिटेट ऑर्गेनिजम्स एंड हैबिटेट ओके आवर अर्थ इज ए वेरी ब्यूटिफुल प्लेस टू ग्रो डिफरेंट प्लांट्स एंड एनिमल्स लिव्स नेचुरली सो एक्चुअली इन आवर सराउंडिंग एरिया नंबर ऑफ थिंग्स आर देर नंबर ऑफ लिविंग थिंग्स एंड नॉन लिविंग थिंग्स आर प्रेजेंट ऑन आवर सराउंडिंग एरिया ऑन आवर earth so earth contains biospheres biomes ecosystems <coughs> ecosystems habitats communities the populations and uh, organisms living organisms non living organisms are existing on the land okay we can see with our naked eye some type of organisms we can't see with our naked eye some organisms actually there are two types of worlds macro world and microbial world so the uh, we can see the macro organisms the process by which things are visible to our naked eye they are macro organisms and uh, microbial world we can't see so actually on my palm and my dress and everywhere uh, in the water on the land the micro organisms are present everywhere so but we don't know there is a micro organisms here is the micro organisms are present the water contains micro organisms we don't know but how can we know how can we know these micro organisms yes to knowing of this unknown unknown world number of scientists are working to know the unknown world nearly 350 years ago so the microscope was discovered before 350 years ago 350 years ago the microscope was discovered so the microscope is the way the microscope is the way to discover unknown world microbial world so these microscopes who discovered this microscope the microscopes are discovered number of scientists so there are three types of four microscopes are there simple microscope compound microscope electronic microscope the simple microscope is discovered by Anthony van Leeuwenhoek in the year 1674 the compound microscope was discovered by Zacharias Janssen in the year 1595 and electronic microscope discovered by Max Noll and Ernest Rasca Max Noll and Ernest Rasca in the year in the year 1500 sorry 1931 so with the help of these mi microscopes the scientists wanted to know the unknown world the microbial world the present in the water and dust everywhere so they are trying they tried a number of times to know the unknown world. so in this one of the scientists the scientist name is anthony van leeuwenhoek he was the first person to observe the microbial world under the microscope so anthony van leeuwenhoek uh, collected a pond water anthony van leeuwenhoek collected pond water and he put a drop of water on the slide this is the slide 
he put a drop of water on the slide of pond water and he observed under the microscope so when he observed this drop of pond water this drop of pond water impurity of pond water he observed some moving organisms are present in this slide some moving organisms are present in this uh, one drop of uh, pond water so he called them animalcules anthony one level who called them animalcules so these animalcules are uh, he, he called in these animalcules he discovered he observed number of microorganisms so these moving organisms are animalcules he called by the anthony van anthony van leeuwenhoek at the same time they are the microorganisms so what type of microorganisms are discovered by anthony van leeuwenhoek bacteria protozoans and red blood cells also observed by the anthony van leeuwenhoek so like these microorganisms are observed by anthony van leeuwenhoek actually the microorganisms what are microorganisms so we can't see i told you already we can't see with our naked eye the microorganisms so microorganisms means microbes very small very minute organisms are tiny organisms we can't see with our naked eye we can't see with our unaided eye so with the help of microscope only we can see this so he done anthony van leeuwenhoek conducted several experiments to know the uh, microbial world finally he succeeded finally he discovered the microorganisms under the microscope so the study of microbes is called microbiology the study of study of microbes is called microbiology the study of microbes is called microbiology so who discovered these microbes anthony van leeuwenhoek discovered microbes that's why he was the father of microbiology who was the father of microbiology anthony van leeuwenhoek father of microbiology so like this way he discovered unknown world with the help of microscope okay dears here our lesson name is organisms and habitat so these organisms the living organisms and non living organisms are present in the habitat and ecosystem so actually the living beings what are what are living beings already in the previous classes we learned what are living things the things which we the things which grow move breathe and reproduce are called living things what are non living things the things which cannot grow move breathe and reproduce are called non living things simply i am telling living things have a life non living things non living things they didn't have a life living things can move from place to place place to another place non living things cannot move from one place to another place i am telling you the living things are a biotic components the living things nothing but a biotic components we are calling also biotic components non living things are a biotic components so living things biotic components non living things a biotic components a biotic components living things biotic components non living things a biotic components bio bio means life bio means life so they have a life that's why all the biotic components are living things so a means absent or false 
What absent? Bio. Bio is absent. Bio means life. The life is absent. That's why they are non-living things. Living things and non-living things. Actually, here the chairs and tables have a four legs, like animals. But animals are moving from place to place. But chairs and tables are not moving from one place to another place. What is the difference? Why? Why this chair? Why this table can't move from place to place? Why the animals are moving from one place to another place? Because of whom? they have a life. They didn't have a life. They are the living things. They are the. These are the non-living things. So if these are having the life, they can move from place to place. So for the based on this, at the same time, trees cannot move from one place to another place, but they can move. They can. They have a movement. They have a movement. So, for example, the trees are uh, moving like this. So they they are they have a movement just they have just movement, but they can't move from place to place, one place to another place. Yes, I am here. I I stood here. Yes, I stood here. I am I am doing exercise. I am doing exercise. So my hands are moving. So is it movement? So the differences I will tell. The differences I will. Tell. So for the based on this, the living beings shows two types of movements. Living beings shows two types of movements. What are they? First one is locomotion. Second one is movement of curvature. Movement of curvature. The animal shows two types of movements. So they are the locomotion and movement of curvature. Locomotion and movement of curvature. So what is meant by locomotion? What is meant by locomotion? So the movement of the movement of an organism, the movement of an organism from one place to another place is called locomotion. Again, I am repeating. The movement of an organism, the movement of any of the organism, the movement of an organism from one place to another place is called locomotion. And next. What is what is the movement of curvature? The movement of curvature. It is not visible. I think. So movement of curvature. Uh, the, what is the mean? What is the what is movement of curvature? The movement of body. The movement of body parts of the organism. The movement of body parts of the organism are called. Movement of curvature means so the difference is between locomotion means they can move from place to another place. Movement of curvature means they can move where they can where they can situated. For example, I stood here, so I am moving, I am moving. So my hands are moving, my hands are moving. Okay, so is this locomotion or movement of curvature? So my hand is moving. So my hand is moving. So is this uh, locomotion or movement of curvature? I stood here. I stood here, and uh, here onwards only I am moving my hand. So this is the movement of curvature, not a locomotion. I can't move from here to here. If I move from here to here means that is the locomotion. Okay, now clear, huh? So movement of curvature. The examples of locomotion. So examples of locomotion very easy. The animals can move on, move from one place to another place. The um, human beings also move from one place to another place. So this is this is locomotion. And next uh, movement of curvature. What is movement of curvature? So the movement of the examples of movement of curvature is. Uh, opening of flower petals, opening of flower petals, and uh, leaves, 
wobbling of leaf, leaflets or leaves. Uh, these are the examples of movement of curvature. Have you understood? Opening of flower petals is the uh, locomo sorry, movement of curvature. Locomotory or locomotion examples animals, for example, we are walking, jumping, running, so etc. activities we are doing, we are doing exercises, swimming, all these activities are belongs to locomotion. So what is the what are the examples of movement of curvature? The examples of movement of curvature, opening of flower petals, blooming of flowers and leaflets, the moving of the plant branches, the moving of the plant uh, leaves and leaflets. This is uh, the mo uh, look, movement of curvature. And next, so in plants, opening of flowers, flower petals, and coil uh, tendrils. Opening of flower petals, tendrils. Tendrils means a spring like structures. And this means spring like structures. So like these structures. These spring spring like structures hold the any of the plant and they can grow. These type of plants will grow with the help of tendrils. The tendrils are grow the tendrils are growing like this spring like structures. Mostly we can see these type of tendrils uh, in creepers. The creepers are crawling on the land, so the creepers are uh, growing with the help of another plant support. So these are the examples of uh, moment of curvature. And next, children, what are the characteristics? What are the characteristics of uh, living organisms? What are the characteristics of uh, living organisms? I will tell. Okay, here before going to explain this is. I wanted to introduce the about the habitat because of our lesson name is organisms and habitat. So you have you have an idea about organisms and next habitat. Habitat is a dwelling place for different plants and animals to live naturally. Habitat is the dwelling place for different plants and animals to live naturally. For example, tree as a habitat, pond as a habitat, and house as a habitat. So tree is giving shelter for the different birds, and a house is giving shelter for us and different peoples. We are sleeping in the house, we are living in the house. So every, every day we are, I mean, throughout the day we are living in the houses and some other buildings. So we are living in the schools, so like this. Whatever the house is a habitat because of house giving shelter for us, and tree as a habitat because of tree trees are giving a shelter for the birds. At the same time, pond as a habitat, some aquatic animals are living in the pond. So aquatic animals means fishes, crustaceans like these animals. They are living in the water. They are called aquatic animals. The aquatic plants also living in the water, and the process by which animals are living in the water, they are the uh, aquatic animals. The process by which plants are living in the water, they are the aquatic plants. So this is the uh, about habitat. So these type of habitats means trees or ponds or houses are situated in a particular. A huge, huge, I mean, a large land, I mean, large area of land. That large area of land is the ecosystem. All these habitats are situated in the ecosystem. Ecosystem is in the ecosystem, and habitat uh, both biotic and abiotic components are living in the ecosystem and habitat. Here, I wanted to ask you what are the examples of biotic components? 
human beings plants and animals are the biotic components which has a life is called biotic components what are the examples of abiotic components that didn't have a life chalk piece duster something bench table all these are abiotic components and uh, important uh, air water land soil uh, so i mean soil sunlight they are the examples of uh, abiotic components okay clear up to so this is the organism and uh, habitat uh, introduction now i wanted to introduce to you about uh, the living characteristics of uh, the characteristics of living beings what character what living characteristics are uh, have living beings i will tell okay here one of the girl the girl name is lata lata went to uh, field trip to in his in her village pond with her friends and uh, with her teacher so with her teacher and friends she went to village pond it is a field trip so in that in that field trip her teacher is showing all the things what the living things are living uh, present in the pond what the li non living things are present in the pond his teacher her teacher is explaining each and every point and her teacher showing the eggs of snails growing under the lotus leaf everything they are observing all those students are observing each and everything what are the living things and non living things living things are present in the pond they are observing keenly okay like this way one of the student that student name is venkatesh the venkatesh and his friend tanvir actually venkatesh liked very much his blue shirt last year he last year uh, he stitched that shirt last year shirt venkatesh last year uh, shirt he wanted to wear this year so because of he liked very much that shirt blue color shirt so his last year shirt he he is ready to wear but uh, this last year blue color shirt is not fitted fit for him because what happens why this shirt is not fit for him last year this same shirt is fitted for him but this year not fit for him what is the reason because of uh, he was a living being he has a life he was the biotic comp biotic uh, component i mean he was a living being he has a living being character one of the living being character is growth one of the living being character is movement one of the living being character is reproduce breathing and feeling feeling and touch so everything all these are the living being characters so he grown last year he was a short boy this year he was a he was a uh, taller boy so that's why that shirt is not fit for him yes venkatesh and his friend tanvir went to tailor shop and they are asking the to the tailor why this shirt is not fit for me last year this shirt is fitted for me but this year not what happens i wanted just i want to wear this shirt right now please make it fit for me as the tailor is uh, looking like this what this is the last year shirt how this shirt is not fit uh, to you this year because this shirt is not fit for you because of you are you are the living being you are grown you are grown in is in your body size so you have a growth characteristic living characteristic so that's why this shirt is not fit for you oh, oh yes i have a living being i am the living being character i am the living being i have a living being character growth that's why i am growing that's why this shirt is not fit for me that uh, he understood while they come back venkatesh and tanvir come back they observed a dog sleeping on the road side a dog lying on the road side and next they observed so is this dog is living or not so how can we say is it living or not then tanvir replied this dog is alive venkatesh asking how how you are telling 
This is a lion. Tanvir replied, This dog's stomach is moving up and down. It is breathing. The dog is taking breathing. The breathing process is going on. That's why it is the living being. It is the living being. So, the living beings have a, some type of characteristics. Living characteristics. Are all type of living being characteristics are same in non-living beings? No. The living being characteristics are quite different than the non-living being characteristics. Now I will tell you a table, the living being characteristics. Okay, right here. And next, look at the board. So the living being characteristics, living being characteristics. Here, growth. A growth movement taking food, breathing, getting rid of waste, response to touch, heat, light. These are the characteristics. So, just we can see, we can observe. Is these characteristics are present? Or is these characteristics that take place in you, in plants, in animals, in rocks? One second. So, the growth is takes place in you. And growth is there in the plants, the growth is there in the animals, the growth is there in the not there in the rocks. And the moment is there in, in you, the moment is there in plants, the moment is there in animals, there is no moment in rocks. We will take food, plants will take food, animals will take food, but not, not rocks. And next breathing, we are breathing. Plants also breathing, animals also breathing, but not rocks. Getting rid of waste. So the nitrogenous waste we release it and the animals also release it. Plants also uh, waste materials release it like wax, uh, latex, renins, raisins, like this. And but not in rocks. And response to touch, heat, light. We will respond. If you uh, touch any of the sharp object, if you touch fire, if you uh, looking at the bright light, we feel something. So if you touch a sharp object, um, automatically, immediately we will take back our black our hand. If you touch the block of ice, we feel cool. So if you looking the bright light, our eyes are blinking. So those characteristics are takes place in uh, you, in you, there is takes place in you and blacks and uh, animals, not in rocks. So in plants, how the, uh, uh, the how the response to not to touch heat light in plants? So the plants are growing with the help of light. They need heat. At the same time, if you touch the touch me not plants, they will respond. The response to st stimulus to response. Some type of plants are uh, getting stimulus to response. One of the example of this uh, touch stimulus to response. Atipati mimosa pudica plant. And next. Uh, and last and final, so last and final character is that is giving birth to animals. Last and final character is giving birth to giving birth. So in you, we will human beings will give birth. Plants will give birth to the plants directly they didn't give birth. The plants, plants directly they, the plants they didn't give birth directly. They didn't give plant directly. The plants are produced seeds. The seed will germinate. Okay, now so seed also living being. Seed also living thing. So if it is dried, but if you place it in the soil, the seed will grow a new plant. So, and next, uh, the giving birth uh, takes place in animals, but not in rocks. Okay, so I wanted to conclude right now. So, remaining details and remaining topic, uh, I will explain in the next session. Okay, thank you.